Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Tommy's Tone Words. Today we're going to be looking at yet another of my favourite words. This is Juglin's Heinzai Clara Walnut. Um, it is a tree that grows in California and up the Pacific West Coast to uh, Oregon. Not to be not to be confused with um, black walnut or English walnut, which is Juglans region. So uh, Clara walnut commercially is used uh, for producing walnuts. Um, so it's got a particularly robust rootstock. And so what they do is they'll take uh, Clara walnut rootstock, they'll graft on English walnut and you get really fantastic yields of walnut. So this tree is also used not only in the orchards for fruit bearing, but also um, as a windrow tree as well. And commercially, once it, the, the walnut stops producing optimal yields, they'll clear it um, and replant. And as such, this is a really great sustainable timber. Um, trees typically grow between nine and 18 meters tall. Uh, so big, big old trees producing lots of beautiful timber. It's really widely used in furniture making. It's also used quite a lot in gun stocks because as you can see, on this particular piece, the, the grain kind of as it, as it spreads out at the bottom of the tree is perfect for um, that kind of gun stock shape. So a couple of the, the stats that we've been working with, the specific gravity at 12% moisture content for Clara Walnut is 0.62. And so that's the ratio, comparable ratio to the density of water. And on the Janker scale of hardness, we are looking at 1,130 pounds of force needed to drive a steel ball of half an inch diameter, a quarter of an inch into the wood. So on sometime last week, I think last Thursday, we did oven call, which I think was around 1,300, so slightly softer than um, oven call. And also this is the softest wood we have done so far. So let's have a, let's have a little tap of the walnut and you can you can hear what I'm, I'm hearing. Um, I will say that um, this is this is not a scientific uh, method. This is this the, the kind of tap testing is how I'm getting an instant impression of what the individual piece of wood is doing. Of course every uh, piece of wood that I receive and handle is ever so slightly different dimensions um, and so it's not a scientific test but you know, I've handled thousands of pieces of tonewood, thousands of pieces of tonewood, um, and many examples of the same species. And so doing this kind of quick tap test gives me a sense of what the wood is doing, um, if it's a good example of the species or not. So let's give it a little test. This is, this is typically um, oversized to what I would normally use, but still I'm, I'm gonna get a good sense of what's going on. So I'm getting really pleasing kind of highs there. The low end has a very rapid attack and then decays away very, very quickly. So it's not a sustaining low end. And so you might be asking, well, what does that mean? How does that translate into the sound of a guitar? Well, fundamentally, if you think of the guitar as an air pump, that's how Irvin always used to teach us to think about the guitar, it's an air pump. You've got energy going into the system by way of the strings vibrating, and then um, that is moving air within the sound box, and that is getting translated into and amplified into the sound that we hear. Some woods are gonna be more efficient at dealing with that energy, um, and some woods are um, gonna absorb it, okay? So things like Brazilian rosewood, really, really efficient, rings like a piece of glass. It's not absorbing that energy, it's putting it back into the system to be recycled and, and, and generate sound. 
something like walnut, which is less brittle, it's less dense, it's wanting to absorb a little bit more of that energy. It's got higher internal friction. So the, the fibers, the trachides inside the wood, there's more internal friction, which is kind of absorbing that energy, it's moving around. And as a result, that kind of impacts the sound of the instrument. Now, I'm not a physicist. I'm not an acoustic engineer. Um, these are kind of loose ideas that I find helpful and hopefully you'll start to get an idea of what's going on when I'm tapping pieces of wood and how that kind of translates into the sound of a guitar. Um, every piece of wood is different. Every species, every piece, every example within a species is different. And so there's no, there's no like fixed recipe. You know, it's not a case of um, if you want a guitar to sound like X, if you mix uh, Y and Z, you'll get, you know, this kind of result, this kind of sounding guitar. It's really important that when you are choosing your tone words, you are specking out your instrument, that you work with your luthier, um, work with their experience, their understanding of what they can get from a piece of wood, rather than saying, I want this guitar to sound like this, so therefore we're gonna use spruce and we're gonna use walnut and it's gonna sound like this. Because I'm always amazed at the quality of sound that different luthiers are able to get with different woods. So what I always talk about with my clients is trying to develop uh, a shared vocabulary by using reference points. And in my case, it's you know preferable to look at guitars that I've made in the past and say, okay, I like what this guitar is doing, I like what this guitar is doing, and we look at those guitars, we analyze what's going on, not only with the tone woods, but also the body size, the scale length, the um, bridge position, and so we kind of work together, we come up with a shared vocabulary, um, you know, because ultimately, we use lots of different words to describe tone words and describe sound and not they're not always useful because you know bright might mean a different thing to you warm might mean a different thing to you so you know working with your luthier using reference points is the way that i've found most helpful in, in crafting a sound so hopefully that kind of makes sense the idea with these videos is uh, just to give you an insight into the materials that i'm using why i like them and then linking you to guitars that I've made with these materials so that you can get a sense of what the materials are doing with the style of guitar that I build to produce the sound that you are hearing. Hopefully that makes sense. It's a very complex subject. Um, but my, my hope is that with these videos is that together we're gonna, you're, gonna have, you're gonna build up uh, a reference Point. You're going to build up that vocabulary. You're going to get a sense of what I'm hearing um, when I'm tapping a piece of wood and how that translates into the sound of a guitar. Anyway, I think that's enough of that. I think it's time for some magic spray. All right, you know, magic spray makes everything better. And um, man, I love Claro Walnut. One of my one of my the first serious pieces of furniture that I ever made training as a cabinet maker. Um, was made from walnut and the joy I felt at planing into that walnut for the very first time has never left me and as such walnut has always been a firm favorite. That was English walnut but this is Clara walnut. Very very similar, very similar grain structure, same family, same genus um, but wow. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful curl, beautiful color We've got some stress curl down here as the tree is compressing in on itself as it goes down into the root ball. Fantastic, fantastic timber. So, I'm just gonna check the camera. It's still rolling and I haven't been waffling for nothing. We are still going, that's good. Okay, um, I'm just gonna have a little look at my notes here and uh, make sure I haven't uh, missed anything. Okay, so this particular piece of wood I picked up during my apprenticeship with Urban Samoji. I was really keen to explore um, sustainable sources of, of material 
and you know combined with the fact that walnut is just such a favorite of mine and uh yeah this this piece just kind of screamed out at me it, you know walnut is a, is a classic tone word it's used a lot and for very good reason um it's uh it's just it's just fabulous i think this set should yield me enough material to make an all walnut guitar so walnut top walnut back and sides i think probably only a model s um and actually this is earmarked for uh, uh megan wells of megan wells guitars and mandolins uh, we've been talking for a little while about doing a trade uh, when that will happen i don't know perhaps it's when we're gray and old but uh, this is the wood that I've kind of earmarked for Megan. And um, yeah, what a beautiful little guitar I think it's gonna make. So, there you go. <laughs> Clara Walnut, Juglin's Heinzai. One of my favorites, uh, a prize in my collection, and I really hope you found this video useful, interesting. Um, any comments, I love to see them. If there's anything when I'm gibbering on that doesn't make sense, please pull me up on it. If there's any further detail you would like, let me know in the comments. Um, I really hope this is educational. It's certainly fun for me digging through the stash and uh, sharing my passion for the woods that I work with, with you, and hopefully inspiring you um, to think about different avenues you can approach when thinking about your next guitar. So tomorrow, who knows what it'll be? I'm going to have a little rifle and uh, we'll see you then.